This afternoon, I would like to welcome Professor Peter. He is here today to meet us, to teach us and to introduce himself more in terms of the life prosperity. I'm talking about life prosperity, I'm talking about the, the future that you are heading towards uh, in a motivational way. So this is uh, Dr. Makunia Nyaesu, and this is our grade 12, a science class, a history class, and a, a commerce class. They are full of energy, as you can see. They look all smart, though they didn't know that you were coming, but they are always smart like this. You can see they are already smiling. <laughs> Russell Cartus for the Here more, some Dr. 
Kapita Bakuta. And uh, I have, uh, other than the two girls, but my second daughter is a grown up as well. She's working for the United Nations. Wow. She's now based in uh, Juba in South Sudan. And other than the two girls, who are very hardworking girls, I have three boys. Uh, who are very, very serious as well, as you can see. I'm a teacher and I don't allow my kids to, to play around. <laughs> so I'm here today, uh, good friends, uh, to uh, not to take, make a long speech, but to just give you a few words of motivation, okay? Because uh, some of you may be looking at me and thinking, wow, this guy is one, coming from a very rich family, whose father had a lot of money and his mother had no, I am just like all of you here. You'll be surprised, I know you're going to be surprised to hear that I went to school walking on my bare feet with no shoes for 12 years. Walking a distance of about 14 kilometers in my village of origin to go to primary school. After primary school, I went to secondary school. It was a Catholic school and I did very well as God always makes his, does his things. When you are poor, God gives you a good brain, doesn't Amen. it? Amen. Sure, because God cannot give everything to everybody. So if you don't have money, God gives you a good brain. And that good brain can take you over to anywhere you want to go. So I'm here today to, to uh, advise you guys to take your studies very seriously. Because as the very, very revered Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful tool that you can use to change the world. You understand? I want to say that I want to say that all of you. Education is the most powerful tool that you can use to change the world. It's not me, that's Madiba Mendoza. So I want you guys to take your studies very seriously. Aim high, do not aim low. Make sure that you're using all the God-given abilities that, that you can use, that you have, to put yourself high on the mountain. Do not think of yourselves as some little person who cannot change the world. You can change the world using education. I want to say that 1,000 times. You can change this world using education. Education is the only tool that nobody, once you are given that tool, nobody, not even your parents, not even your teachers can take, take it away from you. It is yours. Once they give it to you, that's it. They can't take it. Even if they want to take it, they can't. Because it's in your head. So I want, you to, I want to advise you guys to take your studies very seriously. Avoid stupid things that may make you not achieve your academic goals. And I will name some of those things. Because you remember, I taught here. I know South African kids very well. One of the first things is drug addiction. I want you guys to run away from drugs. Because drugs kill. I want you guys to run away from abusive alcoholism. Do not drink alcohol like stupid people because it makes you dull, okay? Make sure that you avoid teen pregnancy. As I always say to my daughters, sex can wait. Education will never wait. So you must prioritize your education and keep away all this fantasy about sex. Yes. Especially teenage sex. We cannot have a situation where babies are giving birth to babies. It's unacceptable. And I, when, my, when I was here in the 90s, I wrote articles in the Northern Review. At the time, it was Northern Reviews. Today, it's called Polyquale Review. I wrote articles in the Northern Times. I think it's probably defunct now. It's a little longer. I wrote a lot of articles. I should have also mentioned that I also taught at Taxila High School. You guys know Taxila? Yes. I forgot that one. I taught at Taxila. So I know South Africa very well, uh, good friends. Make sure you don't abuse sex. Because sex can be very deadly. I, just, I was reading, I read like crazy. I've been reading the papers, they say about 20% about of the South African population is HIV positive. Now that is sad news. So if you must have sex, good friends, if you have to have to have sex, make sure it is not unsafe sex, okay? I'm saying, I'm saying this as a father of three daughters. And I say exactly that to them. Do not be stupid to go and have unprotected sex. It will kill you. You you contact AIDS, and AIDS is a killer. It can give you ARV. That's nonsense. ARV can prolong your life, but you're still sick. You're still an AIDS patient. And you can be Einstein. Who knows Einstein? What is Einstein? Nobody knows Einstein. Who knows Albert Einstein? Nobody knows. It was this pop. Yes, yeah, Einstein. 
Yes. Uh, you can move with the test electric, uh, but something about electric, uh, That's right. Yeah. He was a very, very uh, invented person. I'm just using him to say that if you, even if you're Einstein, if you're sick, it doesn't, you, your, your brain is not over useful because you're sick. So please make sure that you avoid those things. Respect your teachers because these are role models. You can't, no teacher is going, to, is going to be excited to teach you if you're disrespectful. Respect your parents, okay? I've heard of parents beating up their daughters and so on and so forth and their sons. I'm not saying you're wrong, but if you are respectful to your parents, to your mother and your dad or your father, I don't see why you, your father or your mother will grab a cane and start running after you to beat you up like you're an animal. So be respectful, okay? One last thing I want to say, is that when you come to the age of political activity, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very, very dangerous grounds now, it is important that you be politically active. I don't know the, aging, the voting age in South Africa, that is about 18. When you get to the age of 18, make sure that you participate in the electoral process. You have to choose your leaders using the ballot box and not using the bullet. I've also read a lot of articles in newspapers here lately we're going to be having your local government elections on August the 3rd, that's tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. No, in two days. There's been a lot of killings and so on and so forth. That's a side issue, but I want to encourage you, good friends, that the 21st century belongs to you. You have to be participants in the political process. Make sure when you turn 18, you vote. You will vote in good leaders and vote out bad leaders. That's the power you have. Okay? So be going for the answer. Um, I think I have said all the things that I wanted to say, but one thing that I have to say, I have not said anything about what I do in the United States Harvard. I have not. So I started all this teaching here in South Africa. I first started teaching in Cameroon actually. And then I started in South Africa. Uh, I love South Africa, you're great friends. But I decided to go to the United States because I wanted to have a big degree and teach white people. How about that? How about the black man teaching white people? So I did that. I had a, a, a doctorate degree, it's called a PhD, a Doctor of Philosophy in, 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 in your area of specialization. So I am a professor of global languages and applied linguistics at a university called the University of Indianapolis in the, in the Midwest of the United States. So that's where I am now. I have two, two very important positions there. I'm the chair of the department, and I'm also one of the directors in a mega center that they've created uh, for curriculum consumption and all that stuff. So that's why I am, I am right now, and I know some of you may be very interested in coming to study in the United States. I encourage you strongly to study very hard, take your language studies very seriously, because when you do apply to come to the United States as an African student, they want you to write an exam called the TOEFL. The TOEFL, I think it's a test of English as uh, a foreign language, which you must pass in order to come be admitted to study as a foreign student in the United States. So take your language studies very seriously, especially English. I'm not saying that because my brother and friend, Mr. Sekepe, teaches English. I'm just giving you a better fact of life. If you want to come and study in the United States, you need to know good English, okay? Not, you cannot speak American English, but you speak good African English to be able to pass your exam, your, t your, t your TESOL test, and come to the United States. I will be, uh, of course, very uh, willing and very happy to help you guys come and study at my university because I'm encouraging black kids to come study there because that puts the, the, the Africa on the, on the world map. So make sure that you keep in touch with my brother, uh, Winston Sukepe, who has all my contact details. I can run, but I cannot hide because he's there. He will divulge all my secrets. So you can talk to him, and he will, I can give you all my, uh, all my contact details, okay? I'm very happy to, to be given this opportunity to talk to you. You look like very serious students to me, and I think that I want. I think that you are going to make a very good future for this country. So please make sure that you keep your. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing that. Keep your studies very, very high in, on your agenda, and make sure that every other thing that is your life comes second. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I know I talk a lot. I can talk for five hours, but I'm not going to do that because you're hungry and you want to ask me questions. Okay. So I'm going to stop now.
and ask you to ask me any question that is in your brain. Let's go. Any questions about myself, about America, about my time here in South Africa, about my family, about what I teach, about the, the attitude of my students? Okay, and we need to listen to the, the people who are asking questions. Yes, sir. When did you take the money to go to America? Good question. As I told you, I'm a very poor person, and I know many of you can identify with that because I don't think many of you are terribly rich either. And I don't say this as an insult because I'm a very, I was a very, very poor, I think I'm still a very poor person. <laughs> but I was poorer before I went to the United States. So what happened is that my brother here knows him. There's something called the U.S. Uh, Green Card Lottery. You know, like the lottery you, you play to win some money here? There's something called the United States Lottery, Green Card. So you go there, you play, you go, you go it's now it's online. But when I did it in, 19, in the 90s, uh, I used to go with my brother here to put money in, in a bank account, in, uh, in a lawyer's uh, account in uh, Los Angeles, in, the, in California. So you played that. And I did that four times. Talking about not being, not being willing to give up. I played three times. Didn't get it. So I kept telling my brother, I'm going to go to the United States. Said, okay, we'll let's go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I played the, the whole time and I won it. So that's what I do. That went to the United States. So you play the Blink Up Lottery. And when you win, the difficulty, and anybody who's interested in going to you, the difficulty is getting somebody who will stand and, and, and uh, sign what we call the affidavit of support. That means. If you come to the United States, somebody needs to say, if you run into financial trouble, I will be able to stand behind you and support you. you so you need somebody in the United States to give you that guarantee. So I was lucky enough to have somebody to, to, to sign that document for me. But uh, since you are interested, if you win it, tell me, I'll sign it for you. I'm not, I'm not joking, I'm serious. I'll sign it for you, okay? Right. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Are you had a question? No. Any other I'm talking about it. Anybody who wins, it's not just him. Anybody who wins the green card lottery, I'll sign it for you. You let us in. Yes, Yes, sir. Let's listen. Every question is important. Every question is important. Very good. That's a very excellent question. Because you may be asking, why did this guy, that's me, why did, I, why did he leave South Africa to go to the United States? The quality of education in South Africa is very good. Okay? But the quality of education in the United States is better. My colleague here studied in Kansas, so he will tell you. He can also do the comparison. He's studied in the United as well. So the quality <laughs> over there. And the university pays for all that. So you, you travel, and before you get your four-year degree at the university, you know the world. It's called study away. To broaden your horizon, to make you know the world, and have experiences, intercultural, cross-cultural experiences, and so on and so forth. Another thing that we do, which you probably don't do here in, nice, in uh, South Africa a lot, we do service learning. Service learning means that I can take you guys and we go to the community and we give back to the community. We set up a project where you do a few things to help those local guys in the, in the, in the villages. 
and you give back, you help parents, help them with agriculture, whatever they do, you help them. So those are some of the few things that we do in the States that as a teacher, I taught here at high school, I taught in Cameroon, at high school and secondary school, I don't see that happening here in Africa. Not, not just South Africa, but the whole of Africa. And there are many other things. Computer technology, technology uh, and, you know, using the use of technology in education. If this class was in the United States, you know, you have, you have computer all over the place, you have smart boards all over the place, and you use a lot of technology. You use your iPad, you use your tablet, you use your cell phone for study. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scholarships. Yeah. Well, there are tons of scholarships, tons, that's how Americans say, meaning many. Tons of scholarships. <laughs> there are many, 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 many scholarships. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mention just one which you guys know about. You guys know about the Melinda and Bill Gates Scholarship Foundation? Yes. Who knows you know about it? <laughs> okay. Does anybody know know about Bill Gates? Who is Bill Gates? He's the richest man in the world. Why? What business does he do? This guy is very, this guy is very knowledgeable. Listen to him. Thank you, my friend. This is a great guy. Want to clap for this guy? He knows. It. I think he should be one of the richest guys in the world, if not the richest. So he has a foundation. His wife is called Melinda. So there's a foundation called the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation. And they will give you scholarship, my dear friend there, if, you, if you're very interested in sciences. I think they also give for other businesses, other yes. But that's the first I will tell you. And when you, uh, if you are applying for other, other uh, universities, they do have what we call institution-specific scholarships. For example, if you wanted to study psychology or philosophy or nursing, I don't know what, medicine, they have discipline-specific scholarship that they will give to you, but it's very, very highly competitive. That's why I'm telling you, you have to take your studies very seriously so that when you do pass the metric, you pass the metric with very good scores. Because if you're competing for the, Bill, the Melinda and Bill Gates scholarship, it's not just South Africa, it's the world. So you're competing with several other students in the world, and if, you, if you're not performing well, you're not going to get it because they, they have very brilliant uh, applicants as well. Does that make sense to you? So you have to work very hard. Hard work to me, as far as I know, being a poor guy too, who, who grew up from nothing to something today, thank God, I know that hard work is the key to any door you want to open. I'm serious. You, you have work, you get a good break, you, you have work, you open any door. Okay? All right, any other question? I'm prepared to take any question you want to ask. Any other ones? We good? Yes, sir. When you arrive in USA, they didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. When you arrive in USA, they didn't
interesting <laughs> question. Say that again, Blaine. Classifying people to a certain standard. To a certain standard. Thank you. That, that's brilliant. A certain type is the way we classify people based on certain standards or certain perceptions that have no logical definition. For example, when I was coming to get, I've spent a month in South Africa. This is my last week. I'm leaving tomorrow. I came to Cape Town to attend a, an international uh, conference on language and linguistics. And when I told my students that I was coming to South Africa to attend a conference in Cape Town uh, on linguistics, the first thing they asked me, Professor Bakuta, have you bought your gun? Uh, and I said, well, why would I buy a gun? And they said, but we know that in South Africa, in Cape Town, there is, you, you won't find, human beings, you'll find animals and you find elephants and lions, so you must have your gun to shoot them down. <laughs> And I have to take all the time to tell them that, hey, the United States, just like South Africa, is inhabited by both human beings and animals. Okay? So these stereotypes, thank you, my dear daughter there, the stereotypes are something that we black folks in Africa, in, in America, fight with every, every day, every minute, every, every second. You know about Barack Obama? Yes. Who is he? Is he wonderful? Is he beautiful? Yes. He says no. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you beautiful? Because ultimately, I, I proved to them that the power of a man does not lie in the color of his skin, it lies in the power of his brain. Today, I teach my. You probably don't know that in the United States, the white population is the majority. And that means that when I go to teach every morning, and I teach every week, every Monday through Friday, the students that are sitting in front of me are not black folks like you, they're white. They're white kids that I teach every day. If I tell them to lie down, they will lie down. If I tell them to jump up, they will jump up. You know why? Because the brain is there. So it's not about this, it's the head. So when, and, and Barack Obama is the president of the United States, the most powerful nation in the world. Why do you think he's the president? He got a head. So after everything, when they look at your black brother, what is that? <laughs> and then suddenly they see your brain is ticking like a clock. You know what happens? They embrace you. 
they embrace you when the brain is taken. That's why I keep telling you, the brain is a, it's a very precious tool that you cannot waste. Because if you waste it, then they will look at you and say, look at that ugly guy. They're not talking about your skin, they're talking about your ugly brain, you know what I'm saying? All right, that was a good question. Any other questions? Are we good? Yes, sir. You see, this side is very active. That side is not too active. Let's go. What does uh, what are uh, people saying about our president again? <laughs> about 
perceptions. She talks about perceptions the other time. You know that wrestling and boxing are one of the, the careers in the United States that will really put you on the world map and give you a lot of money. Yes. You guys know about uh, Muhammad Ali who died recently? Yes. He, was, he comes from the state of Kentucky, which is the capital is Louisville, next to where I am. My state is called Indiana. I teach at the University of Indianapolis in the, the, in the city of Indian, uh, Indianapolis. That's the same again. Muhammad Ali, you, why do you guys know Muhammad Ali? Because he was a famous boxer. You guys know about uh, Mike Tyson? Yes. yes. The young man. Why do you? He doesn't have a PhD. He can do this, right? So your wrestling career. I know in Africa when you say you want to become a wrestler, you saw they were all lucky. No, it's a career. And I encourage you to read magazines on wrestling. I know you're going to tell me I don't have money, so I can I can send you more magazines through my phone. You have to begin to read magazines that talk about wrestling. If you are one of those guys that use the social media, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and all that, then you need to begin to visit those websites to educate yourself a little bit on how the kinds of discussions that are taking place on social media that relate to wrestling. And then when you do decide to come to the United States to pursue wrestling, if you don't have any other person, you can talk to me. We can, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can come over and uh, meet some of the guys who are doing wrestling. Exactly. So you need to talk to the gurus that are in wrestling uh, when you get to the United States, and I can help you do that when you come. Okay. But the first thing, though, is that you need to begin to educate yourself right now by reading magazines and, and all kinds of literature that relate to wrestling. That's how you broaden your mind. You know big names in the in the field, and then you go to Google if you use Google and you Google things about wrestling in the United States, and career opportunities in wrestling, and you need to do that. Please do not think that his, his question is silly. It is not. Wrestling is a career, and you, if you do it well, you can be as rich as Bill Gates. Seriously, I'm not joking, I'm serious. You know, even this thing about music, in, 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 in most African countries, when you say you want to do music, they say, oh, he's a tootie. No. <laughs> You know, you don't, you don't, when you do music, it doesn't mean you're not serious. I mean, music is a career, and you need to do it seriously, okay? I'm, I'm going to take one last question, and I think we, uh, my, my friends and colleagues, they said we could take a, a good photo if you guys like. Um, so, uh, let me take one last question. Yes, sir. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I just want to ask you a question about uh, the living style in America. Living style in America, good. Yeah, so, you know that in South Africa, the, we believe it, uh, that there are some witchcraft and <laughs> you know that there are some sangoma here. <laughs> 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 but so far, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just want to ask you a simple question that uh, I heard that, uh, uh, or I know that America is a better is a better place where you can or they are qualified to what a Japanese or whatever and the qualification are very high no? mm -hmm. so what I want to ask you if I want to practice in some I want to I want to be Sango <laughs> 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 it's not a silly question I'm gonna to explain to you why yes can I get a better sango in America? Thank you, thank you, that's a good question. Now, now together, you have to give me the chance to answer, and then we'll, we'll take a photo. That's, a, that's not a silly question either. He's asking, his question is, can he pursue the career of a sangoma in the United States? The answer is yes. But we're not going to call you Sangoma. We don't even say you go around doing muti. No. We call it traditional medicine or alternative medicine. Anybody wants to do medicine here? Medicine? If you want to go to the career of being a doctor, you, you probably know that there is something that is very official called traditional or alternative medicine. It includes things like acupuncture and all that stuff. 
So if you came to the United States and said, hey, you know what? I'm a Sangoma from South Africa and I want to do Sangoma, Sangoma practice here. They when they they're going to take you and they will initiate you into what they call the alternative medicine career. And in some cases you don't have to have a, a degree, but in some cases you have to have a certificate, which you maybe do some workshops and stuff for about six months and they give you a certificate and you can practice um, your alternative medicine. And let me say one thing real seriously here. In most in some hospitals, not most, some hospitals in the West, not particularly in the United States, Britain, France, I don't know where else, Spain, they do allow medical doctors, people who have gone to medical school and studied for several years, to work together with what you guys call here Sangoma. Those are traditional African, traditional medical doctors. So they work hand to hand because there are some diseases that may not necessarily be killed by the Western medicine. But the Sangoma, who is all powerful, can do it. Does that make sense? So if you're a Sangoma in the making, keep doing that. But when you come to United States, we'll give you baptize, we'll give you a different thing. Okay? He's not done. He's not done. But he has one more question. Yes. Okay, sir. Now you've got to respect this guy because this is the last question I want to hear him about. Okay, sir. I just want to ask you the last question. Mm -hmm. Please, by all means. So, sir, so you know that uh, here in South Africa, uh, there are some some stereotype in thinking that uh, when somebody has passed on here, mm -hmm. he's going to another world in America. <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing good. If you've been stealing and doing all kinds of horrible things, you go to hell. But he, my friend here thinks that when you die here, you will reappear in the United States. To do what? To do to death. To life. But why? Why the United States? Why not Britain? Why not France? Why not Spain? Why not Portugal? Why not Brazil? I don't know. Seriously, this is a question that baffles me. One thing that I know uh, is that uh, resurrection is not unique to the United States. I seriously have not heard about that. I don't know why people would think that uh, America is the earthly paradise. I don't know. I mean, where did you get that from? Is it the common belief here? That when, when somebody dies here, he is Okay, he is still speaking. He's still speaking, and I want to answer, you remember I promised you, I was going to answer every question, so no question is silly, seriously. Yes, sir. You were teaching me and I'm teaching you as well, yes sir. Sir, uh, some people, uh, let me at last, is this the first time you had a... Uh, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Does any other person know so, about what he's, what he's saying? If somebody knows, just raise up your hand. Anybody know that there's a common belief? This one. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I will, you know what I'm going to do, my friend? I'm going to do more research into that, and I, I will tell him, uh, get back to you through my friend, uh, Mr. Wilson Sikepe, because I'm also investigating a couple of things in the United States, and in South Africa, especially the idea of witch hunting in, in here, in some tribes here, where if somebody dies in the family, they will go after the grandmother and say, hey, you killed that little girl. I'm also researching that to see why it is happening, because that's something I don't understand. Why would a granny kill his or her granddaughter or grandson? I don't, don't get it. So I will research the, the witchcraft thing and I will research your uh, rejuvenation or 
transmutation from South Africa to uh, America in terms of dying, and I'll get back to you. How about that? You know that teachers don't have all the questions of them. And when you're a good teacher, if you don't know the answer, you say you don't know, you go find your, do your research. I'm doing that for you. Thanks, sir. Any other questions? Yes. No. No, I'm not Thank you very much. You have questions, but you see, we cannot spend five hours here. Yes, sir. Do they use corporal punishment in America when they try to discipline their learners? No, they don't do that because if I do that, I'll be I'll be spending the rest of my life in prison. system. The United States doesn't allow teachers of, at any level to even insult a student. You cannot say to a student you're stupid. You cannot. Yeah. 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 Okay. But again, this is not, this is not United States. Yeah. I know my colleagues, my teachers, my colleagues are here are very angry now because I'm telling them they cannot tell you you're stupid. Yeah. 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 But this is, I'm, thinking, I'm talking about the United States, not about South Africa. When I was teaching at Meridian, I used to tell students, you know, you're not, you're a little bit stupid. <laughs> I can't do that down over there because I'll be in jail. I see it, I'm serious. I'll be in jail. Because it is called uh, the abuse of learners. And you traumatize students and you make them feel they're not smart enough to learn. It is not allowed in the United States. Okay? Yes, sir. They allow them to come with their cell phones to school. No. Well, let me not say no. They do, but it's becoming what we call now a global epidemic. And me as a professor, you know what I do? When I do my syllabus, it's about 15 pages. I sent it, I sent it to them online. There's a clause in there saying, no cell phone use in this class for 15 weeks. Because every week they have a, an attendance grade. If I see you with your cell phone in my class, you get a zero for attendance and a zero for participation. It is clear my syllabus is a contract. They, they have it, I have it, it's a contract. If they violate it, I throw them out of class. I'm a very, very serious professor. I don't joke when I use professor. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, one last question, and we will really make it last. You. Sir, <laughs> you. This is the guy that's going to end this whole session now. Yes, sir. <laughs> 